going, everyone? We are here to review some Week 16 tight ends, baby. FanDuel. Yeah. 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 Check uh, up. Let's go. Uh, we're going to review all the questionable tags, all the, the nice tags, all the Christmas tags. You know, Jason's going to be doing his presents. I'm guessing I'm going to be getting a UPS package of, uh, you know, like a new car that I have to put together or something. But, I, you know, it's just a guess. I'm not sure what he's going to get me. Um, you know, $1,000 might be good also, but we'll see. Um, Jason, FanDuel tight end, what do you think general view this week? Uh, pretty ugly in terms of, like, individual matchups. I mean, you know, there's a couple guys in good spots, but for the most part it just seems like a lot of – up in the air, kind of could go either way. Um, you know, a lot of the injuries to kind of talk about. I'll be kind of paying down and taking some shots at cheaper guys and GPPs this week. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, starting off with the top tier here, uh, Jordan Reed, I mean, probably not going to take a gamble on him. I don't know about Tyler Eifert either. Uh who are you looking at between those two, Olsen, Greg Olson and, and Delaney Walker, I guess? I like both. I mean, I think Greg Olson and Delaney Walker are both cash game playable this week. Um, they're also GPP playable. I like Olsen a little bit more just in terms of the upside. Um, I mean, Olsen's been kind of quiet this year. I mean, we really haven't seen him have, you know, a lot of big games of late. I mean, he hasn't found the end zone since the first week of November. So that's what he said. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think a lot of people are kind of going to be turned off, you know, given the fact that he also is in practice this week, should turn people away. I think you should get some lower ownership than expected here with Olsen. Yeah. Um, you know, Kyle Rudolph's kind of been a main staple of, you know, thought process in DFS through the last, second half of the year with sort of his production in the first half and and becoming more of a solidified option uh in that mid-tier with him graham martellus and Brates, uh, that's kind of a tough tier to break down who who are you preferring there uh definitely cameron Brates. i mean yeah. kyle rudolph is is an interesting one because if you think green bay is going to go up and go up by you know a fair amount of points you can see Rudolph having a type of game like last week where, you know, Indy was in control from the start. You know, Rudolph was a guy that he was just going to get you know, plenty of targets with, uh, you know, what he had last week, 10 targets. I mean, over the last four weeks, 10, 8, 12, and 10 in terms of targets and receptions are going to be there. Um, I think a double-digit FanDuel performance is certainly there for him. Homer, I like, home. I like Braid a little bit cheaper. Homer. Um, uh. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. He's he's in a good spot against New Orleans, who's you know bottom ten against tight ends this year. Yeah, no, you say that probably because you're a Notre Dame fan. Probably wouldn't say that if you weren't, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, they churn out tight ends like All right. Yeah, no, know. I'm kidding. Um, I do like Rudolph, but yeah, Brait is an awesome play. Um, I mean, you can break it down, but really against this New Orleans team with the way teams play Mike Evans at this stage, uh, fifty six hundred. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting, huh? It, that's the perfect, perfect price for a tight end right now. Yeah, I like it. Um, and then you kind of get to this weird tier of like, what do you do with this Chargers scenario? Dwayne Allen, Deion Sims, Jared Cook. You liking anyone from that tier? So, I mean, I think the the glaring match at this week, which there's a problem is, you know, tight ends against Cleveland. It's been money here of late. Uh, it's been money this entire season, but you basically have Hunter Henry and Antonio Gates cutting into each other's workload. Um, mm-hmm. Henry, I mean, four touchdowns in the last five games. He's a little bit used more in the middle of the field. I think without Mel- Melvin Gordon, you're just going to see a lot of red zone usage flush to these guys. Um, i got to say I like Henry a little bit more here um, at 5,400. I'm just hoping he can get that couple big catches in the middle of the field and get that red zone touchdown because I really don't see Gates being much of a factor where, you know, he can post a a big score. Uh, Both are are fairly touchdown dependent as, you know, basically all the guys in this tier are. But um, I don't know. I like Henry maybe just a little bit more. Henry is – he's got seven touchdowns in ten games this year. So that's – not bad. 
That's for sure. Uh, Jared Cook, Deion Sims, uh, CJ Fedorowicz. Yeah. 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 I mean, Jared Cook's probably the one I'd take a stab at. Uh, come off a decent week here. I mean, eight targets. You and I were just talking about, you know, the quarterback matchups with these receivers. Mm-hmm. Could see a little bit more kind of, you know, funnel down to Cook this week. Um, outside of that, though, I mean, you know, we've had a couple of punt tight ends here over the last few weeks. None that I'm really intrigued with. Um, Vernon Davis would be kind of an interesting one against, you know, a pretty depleted core there um, with Chicago. Nine targets last week against Carolina. Obviously, Jordan Reed banged up, throwing punches, whatever he is to not get on the field. He may be a stab to take a look at if you need that extra salary because he's only 4,700. Yeah, um, so I will pose a question to you. Um, Life on the line someone you know gouges out your eyes with a fork if you don't get this right uh vernon davis lance kendricks charles clay uh clive walford um who is the highest scoring of that group who's the lowest scoring um and you know who doesn't want to get their eyes gouged out man that's tough charles clay's been playing relatively well here of late back-to-back games with a touchdown i'm gonna say lance kendricks is you know the lowest scoring of the week hmm. um and then that's tough though clive walford could be right there they're the bottom two and then we're going clay and, and davis I, I like that call and are you totally done with kobe fleener i'll be honest i might have made a lineup with him in it already he can go to hell okay <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like from a, a not a DFS like process standpoint, just from a I've played fantasy football for, you know, 10, 10 to 15 years now. This just has, you know, Cook's coming off a huge game. Ownership's going to be with him. This just has just the fantasy gods want to kill you with two five yard Kobe Fleener touchdown passes. It's just, they just want to do it. I know they do. Uh, I'm not saying you gamble on it. I'm just saying you got to be aware that this has a 90% chance of happening. If you play cooks, there's a very, very good chance that happening (laughs) at 2% ownership. It's just so annoying how they've used him this year. Uh, no rhyme or reason to the snaps or, you know, you're just kind of getting phased out, then had a good game, and he's back to the bench. And, uh, I mean, he is what he is. I don't I don't know. It's just really bizarre how they use him. But uh, is there anything below that that I didn't mention that you're interested in? I mean, Jermaine Gresham, kind of 4,500 again. Yeah, I don't think so. I'd rather just go with Davis if I'm going cheap. Charles Clay, I don't mind in an early-only contest. But, yeah, I mean, not a relatively – good week for for kind of cheap tight ends yeah absolutely so um i think that's kind of what we're looking at for this week uh final thoughts pay up pay down pay in the middle what are you feeling uh pay in the middle i mean cameron break 5600 just seems to be a logical cash game option this week um if you have you know if you're not spending up for guys like mccoy uh, or David Johnson, you can go ahead and pay up to you know a Delaney Walker, Greg Olson, if you want. So those are kind of the three that I'm really looking at. Um, I'm not tremendously thrilled with those punt options that we talked about, but they're viable GPP plays. Certainly agree. Um, as always, you know, if you want to check out the article Jason did on this, head over to DailyFantasyCafe.com and you can see who um, we highlighted here. Uh, if you like the YouTube videos and you want to give us a thumbs up and a subscribe, I won't hate that idea. Uh, it's not the worst idea I've ever heard. It's probably not the best either, but it's like certainly in the upper percentile, like at least the 85th percentile of good ideas, I'd say. Make, um, making a Kobe from your line is by far the worst idea I've heard. Yeah, that's like the that's like a five percentile, five percentile, you know, idea. That's like someone who doesn't do well on their MCAS, you know. Like you're getting that low, low For tier. For those who don't know what that is, it's uh, Massachusetts standard testing. Oh, yes, in fifth grade or fourth grade. They make you feel <laughs> horrific about yourself, and then you get your results back, and you're like, oh, actually, I didn't do too bad. Yeah, Unless you did I'm, do bad. I'm, I'm a subpar reader and writer. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I'm slightly below average. Cool. Um, 
as always, you know, thanks for tuning in. Good luck this week. One less point than me. You know, one more point than Jason. Uh, and uh, we will talk to you guys next week.